Hey guys, my name is Z and you're watching Yi Mr. Easy. And welcome to the Design Technology Playlist where today we have 1.5 which is Mechanisms. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 1.5.1, the types of movement. 1.5.2, the classification of levers. 1.5.3, linkages. 1.5.4, cams. 1.5.5, followers. 1.5.6, pulleys and belts. 1.5.7, cranks and sliders, and 1.5.8 which is gear types. So check out the pinned comment for all the timestamps. But we'll move on to 1.5.1 the type of movement, and we'll focus on linear, reciprocation, rotary, and oscillations. And so for linear, it's when something moves in a straight line, like a train moving down the track. Reciprocation is where it has a repeated up and down mo uh, moment, uh, motion, motion or back and forth motion like, uh, like these things over here. Rotary is where something moves around an axis or a pivot point like a wheel. And oscillation is where something has a curved backwards and forwards movement that swings on an axis or a pivot point like a swing or a clock pendulum. Then we have 1.5.2 classification of levers. There's a uh, there's class 1, 2, and 3, calculations related to mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, and load, effort, and efficiency. And levers, are uh, levers use mechanical advantage to make lifting or applying pressure easier. All levers are made of a bar and pivot called a fulcrum. And levers have three main parts over here. The effort is where the amount of force applied by the user and also referred to the input. Fulcrum is where the, le uh, the lever pivots and load is the weight that needs to be moved, as also, ref also referred to the output. So for class, class 1 lever, a large input movement can produce a small output movement but with a greater force, like a, a crowbar, like here. And in class 2 lever, where a large input movement can produce a small output movement with a greater force, but the fulcrum is at one end, like a nutcracker. And class 3 lever, it's limited and the force applied by the user is greater than the output force, like a tweezer. And different, different levers are suitable for different scenarios. And then there's mechanical advantage which is it allows a large force to be exerted with a small effort. And in class 2 lever, a 50 newtons effort is needed to lift a 300 newtons load. Therefore the, the lever has a mechanical advantage of 6, which is load divided by effort. The larger the number, the greater the mechanical advantage and the less effort to move the load. And velocity ratio is where the, is the ratio of the distance the effort has to move compared to the, to the load in a given time. And in class 2 lever, a wheelbarrow handles are lifted 800mm, but the load is only raised 100mm, therefore the velocity ratio is 8. It means that you are lifting the handle 8 times as far as the load is raised. Efficiency is where there's no mechanisms which is 100% efficient due to factors such as friction. And efficiency is the relationship between the input force and movement, and the output force and the movement over here. Then we have 1.5.3 linkages. We have bell crank and reverse motion linkages. And linkages are levers that allows force and motion to be transmitted in a certain way. For example, by reversing the movement or changing its direction. The same rules on mechanical advantage apply to linkages. They still have an input, a fulcrum, and an output that can be adjusted for the desi desired result. And bell crank, this is a class 1 lever that can transmit the motion through a 90 degree to allow an input force to be transmitted around a corner, and you can see them on bicycle bricks or a sack barrel. And reverse motion linkages, and this is also based on class 1 lever but it reverses the motion of the input, such as on the windscreen wipers or gear lever in the car. Then we have 1.5.4 cams. We have pear shaped, eccentric or circular, and a drop or a snail. And cams convert rotary motion into reciprocating and oscillating movement. Cams with different shapes or profiles are attached to a rotation shaft to provide different outputs that are transmitted to, fo to a follower held against it. And there can be three stages of movement, the rise which is the follower going up, fall the follower goes down, and the dwell which is that followers remain stationary. And for the pair shape cams, the effect of shape, motionless or dwells for around half the cycle, and during the second half it rises and falls. 
an example is that a, a, like an open and close with a valve on in like a car engine. An eccentric or circular, it's a circular to give a smooth continuous movement as the follow rises or falls. And that just like in a fuel pump or in steam engines. And in a drop or a snail, it gives a slow rise with a spiral cross section and then sudden fall. An example, it use, it's used in hammers, pun, uh, pun punches, or machines needing a sudden drop like this. Here it, build, it goes up higher when it reaches a peak. And after here, it will go to this stage where it falls down, which is a sudden drop. Then we have 1.5.5, which is followers. And different followers are used for a specific purpose, but all slide or roll on the same, on like the external profile of the cam. And we're going to look into roller, knife, and flat followers. And for roller, it's used when higher speeds are required, such as in engines. And rolling motion reduces friction, so it will be it will like wear better. And it has separate parts in the roller mechanisms and contents with forces pushing them to the side. And knife or edge is used when accuracy is required, such as in embroidery machine, as the cam's profile is followed closely. And it suffers from a rapid rate of wear and contents with forces pushing them to the side. And flat followers is when it's used when higher load bearing capabilities are required such as uh, in a steam engine and they have reduced forces pushing it but suffers from increased friction which uh, produces heat and the larger surface area means it can rotate but has larger load carrying abilities then we have 1.5.6 pulleys and belts we're going to look into V belt velocity ratio and input and output speed and pulleys and belts transmit rotary motion from a driver shaft to a driven shaft and are a drive mechanisms for tools such as a pillar drill. A pulley is a wheel with a shaped groove and the belt fits in the groove, connecting two pulleys. And motion is transferred by friction and in this configuration, the driver pulley and the driven pulley rotate in the same direction over here. And the V-belt is shaped to increase the force that can be transferred and it increases the gripping area by having sloping, slide, slope, sorry, sloping sides. This increases efficiency by reducing any slipping and it can also tighten the drive surfaces as it runs, as it wedges uh, into the pulley wheel. And for velocity ratio, when using pulley wheels of different size, the smaller one will spin faster. And by comparing the size of the two pulleys, we can calculate the velocity ratio, which is the diameter of a driven pulley over the diameter of a driver pulley. And let's, if let's say the driver pulley is 60 millimeters in diameter, and the driven pulley is 20 meters in diameter. 20, which is uh, the driven pulley, divided by 60, the driver pulley is 1 over 3, or 1 with the 1 to 3, the ratio. That means that for one turn of the driver pulley, the driven pulley will rotate three times. Then we have uh, uh, input and output speed. P uh, pulley belts transmit rotary motion from a driver shaft to a driven shaft and are a drive mechanism for tools such as pillar drill as we mentioned just now. And for input and output speed, pulleys are usually connected to a motor or other another power source. The input speed is known and the output speed of the pulley system can be calculated. For example, if the pulley system is has a uh, above, like uh, this over here, like the one just now, has an input speed of one, uh, 18,000, the like input speed, and uh, which is RPM, revolutions per minute, the output speed will be the input speed divided by velocity ratio, which let's say is one uh, 18, sorry, it's meant to be 18,000, but let's say here, 1,800 divided by 1 over 3, which is 5,400 uh, revolutions per minute. And the driven pulley is rotating at 1,800 uh, RPM, and the output speed is 5,400 RPM. Then we have cranks and sliders. These mechanisms convert rotary motion in a crank to reciprocating motion in the slider. The distance of the slider moves depends on the size of the crank arm, and the crank arm can be used as the driving force such as the crankshaft and pistons of a car to compress the air in the cylinder of a compressor. The slider can also operate as the, drive, uh, as the driver turns the crank, for example in a steam engine where the wheels are driven by the pressure of the steam pushing the slide. And the distance moved by the slider is equal to twice the radius of the movement of the crank arm. So here's a really nice diagram over here. Then we have gear types. 
and we're gonna look into a simple and compound gear train, idle gear, RPM, bevel gears, and rack and pinion. A gear is a, is a tooth wheel fixed to a shaft that connects uh, this with other gears to change the speed or direction of a rotating of a driven mechanism. Gears have an advantage over pulley systems because the meshing prevents slippage, so that greater forces can be applied. And simple gear train is when two spur gears are meshed and fixed on a parallel shaft. And simple gear trains reverse the driver's gear direction of the rotary and the driven gear will turn in the opposite direction. So like it's connected so that when one goes this way, the other will go this way too, which is the opposite direction. And speed can increase or decrease when the gears are different sizes and the amount of change in speed is called the velocity ratio as we talked about just now. And here, the gear ratio over velocity ratio or the velocity ratio over here. And the compound gear train is where a compound gear has more than one gear on the shaft. And the VR or velocity ratio is calculated by working out the combined VR of both pairs of gears. And this one here, the figure 1.5.9. Gear A, this, uh, the left one, is driving gear B, uh, which is a simple gear train over here, a small one. And gear B is connected to a gear C, which is the bigger one, and it spins at the same speed. Gear C then drives gear D, which is quite a complicated movement, that's why it's called a compound gear train. So the total VR is the VR of gear train 1 times the VR of gear train 2, which is this 1 to 8. So for every revolution of the driver gear, the driven gear will rotate three, uh, sorry, eight times. And then we have idle gear. In the simple gear train of, uh, of two mesh spar gears, the driver gear and the driven gear will rotate in the opposite directions. With the idle gear, they rotate in the same direction. The idle gear does not have any impact on the, outer, uh, sorry, the output speed, and the velocity ratio is still based on the driver and the drive gears. And RPM or revolutions per minute calculations is the number of times a device such as a gear or a wheel rotate around a fixed axis in a minute. One minute costs per minute RPM. The driver gear and driven gear rotate at different speeds and if they are different sizes. This is dependent on the velocity ratio, often called a gear ratio in relation to gears. Let's say a driver gear rotate on 100 RPM and is connected to a gear system with a 1 to sorry 18 gear rotation. So gear ratio, the output speed will be 100 divided by 1 over 18, 100 times 18, which is 1,800 RPM. And then lastly, we have bevel gear and rack and pinion. Bevel gears is where these specialist gears can transmit rotary motions to 19 degree, and bevel gears vary in size to achieve different gear uh, ratios and output speeds. Two same size gears are called mitre gears, and they still uh, turn through 19 degree, but the output and input speeds are equal over here. And then lastly, rack and pinion. This system uses a gear wheel and a rack to change rotary motion to a linear motion or vice versa. For example, a pillar drill or a car steering system. The rack's movement is determined by the number of teeth on the pinion gear and the number of teeth per meter, TPM, on the rack. So that's it for the specification 1.5 for design technology core content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next design technology video. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.